What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode. This isn't the one that we were really hoping it was gonna be. Um, that one is, uh, it's taking a fair amount of time to edit. We wanna make sure we get it right, but it's gonna be a good one for, for that Sunday night, dinner around the TV, popcorn for dessert, get the whole family around, because it's gonna be a really good video that will be very entertaining. So keep an eye out for that next week when it'll drop on Sunday, US time. All right, on this episode is very exciting. It's kind of something I've always wanted to learn, do. I love stuff that looks old. I love old shit. Um, future warning for any of you diehard billet uh, shiny dudes. This is probably gonna be a video you won't like because I'm gonna do the complete opposite. But massive shout out to Goliath Speed Shop who uh, Jim and I have been chatting and he's basically kind of given me a lot of these tips. I, uh, I made sure it was okay that uh, we're kind of leaking a few secrets, but maybe they aren't secrets, but um, you know, some guys have a little trade stuff they like to keep close. All right, so what we wanna try to achieve on this is making stuff look aged. And I'm gonna show you kind of a step-by-step -step on how we have kind of figured it out along with spitballing ideas with Jim from Goliath Speed Shop um, and you know, just kind of learning off the net. This by no means is like the right way to do it. And I'm just making that clear because there's probably gonna be a few things in this that I've kind of used in weird techniques that might not be something that is for the diehard dude that's like, no, you cannot do that. So just making that clear. So this is all about a bit of fun and it's just experimental and this is what it's all about. It's, it's really fun to kind of create this stuff. It's basically an open palette and we just got a heap of different colors and we're just gonna mix them all together and make that shit brown and paint it. I don't even know why I said that. Okay, so what we are trying to achieve in this is um, we're trying to age aluminum. And uh, the way we're gonna be able to do that is using a oxy action laundry powder. And um, it works. I haven't quite figured out the exact recipe for how many scoops per, um, you know, in the water that we're gonna soak this stuff in, but we'll get into that in the, in, the, uh, in the video. But here is a set of made in Canada stock aluminum heads off a 24 stud. These are what I plan on running on my flathead. Um, purely because I just love the simplicity of them. I like that they do have the made in Canada, just another token of kind of small pieces that I'm doing on this while in Australia. What I wanna do, and there's nothing wrong with this as it is, I would love to just run it and you know, it's, it's been oxidized, it looks great, it's been sitting out, it's got a really nice natural patina to it, but I kinda wanna make something look a little bit cooler. So that is the kind of the before, and this is the after. So from 50%, I've sandblasted this side, and then we've done the uh, patina, patinaization. So patina, patinaization, I don't even know if that's a word. And this side we haven't, so I kind of wanted to just show you the differences. So obviously sandblasting it definitely makes it more consistent and helps. So that's kind of what we're trying to achieve. And honestly, it almost looks like a kind of an old magnesium wheel, which is really cool, because I really like the look of that. And through the way, we're just gonna sort of experiment. We might not get it um, right, right off the bat, uh, we might have to do it twice, or I would like to maybe try a few different things that I've sort of done in the past and see if they might work or they might not work. What we have here is, this is the uh, intake carb setup that's going on my flathead. I also got the needle scaler. You guys have seen this, you know I love using it. It is super fun to texture stuff and, uh, and make it look you know, different. We also have a really nice set of original Cal Custom valve covers. These are for Ben's 302 Windsor that is in his Roadster. Um, again, they do have a really nice patina on them. They look aged. It would be great to stick them on nice and dirty, but I have a feeling the way we're gonna go with this, we could really make it look cool. Um, what I used to try and kind of highlight certain areas is just a little bit of steel wool. So I'm thinking with these, if we, you know, give it that, that aged look and we just kind of highlight a few things. We're not gonna quite go through and polish these fins like traditionally a lot of guys do. We also have his tri-power setup, which is kind of a homemade setup. And uh, we are thinking about doing the intake and the, uh, the plate on top. We also have, this is a eBay special little cast 
devil face with the glass lenses as the eyes. Um, it looks really cool. It's kind of a license plate topper. Uh, they're quite common. So all these things can kind of slightly be reversed too. So if you don't like it, throw it back in the sand blaster and then pull it out, glass bead it, do whatever you want, get it shiny, um, polish it up, make it look, you know, however you want to make it look. This is just purely a really fun little video on trying to age certain things to really, you know, kind of capture that look that we're, what, that we're after. And I think you'll kind of get the idea of where we're going with it once we do quite a few of these pieces and we'll lay them back out on the table. But to get the full image will be, you know, once I have the block painted and we have all this kind of set on and then you have your contrast between your, your polish bits and your cast bits. I think it'll look really, really cool. So we're gonna get a few of these pieces disassembled and prepped and then we're gonna jump over to the sand blaster and spend a bit of time in there and we'll pull it out and show you guys a little before and after. <laughs> Okay, so we got our intake, carbs off, oil pump, generator, and we've got this mounted down to a piece of form ply. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just using a little screw with a washer, and that washer is going to seat down over top of the actual area that gets the uh, bolt that holds it down into the motor. I don't want to damage that too much. I want to make sure it stays flat so that when you're tor torquing it down, everything is staying relatively even. The one thing I wanna make sure I'm completely avoiding is the flat surface that your carburetor and oil pump mount to, because we wanna make sure a gasket is between that and the carburetor and it is sealed so that there is no air leak. So I'm just running, running this down and I'm just going through on each side just so I don't have to stop. I can just kind of get the needle scaler on there and, and continue to go. Um, the needle scaler, I have run these through. They are a little bit flat, so I probably should have, actually, it's because I've hit them with steel so much. They got kind of a sharp edge on them. So I think what I'll do is I'll just quickly pull these out and I will get them back over onto the, the linisher and I'll just make sure they're just rounded off. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen me use this, um, this is a needle scaler used for um, like getting shale off of uh, off frames or like surface rust and I think it was actually designed to get the slag that comes off when you're arc welding on like a you know doing big pipe stuff um, and they work really fantastic for that but usually they come with a squared edge on them and what you do is you just take these put them on your little bench grinder and round them off so that they're not so harsh and then that way especially on aluminum because it's a lot softer um, you can kind of get a really neat texture. Offenhauser, I'm sorry I'm, I'm Hopefully not destroying the intake. I'm just aging it, maybe keep making it look cool. So we'll, uh, we'll start that now. Screw. 
That's it. So there you have it. We have a needle scaled cast aluminum Offenhauser intake. And it did a really good job. And that to me just looks like, like a piece of metal, like an actual steel cast manifold now, which is really funny. Now I'm gonna stick it in the sandblaster to sandblast it to get it obviously clean. And I think the sandblaster is just gonna sort of smooth it out just a little bit. It'll just take a little bit of that kind of sharpness off some of the burrs I can feel. Um, so let's go jump on the sandblaster, put our headphones in and uh, do a lap of this and then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so my back is definitely feeling that sandblaster. Everything we have in here is just too low. Even this is too low. Need to, Ben and I, he's doing stretches behind the camera. We, <laughs> we, need, to, we need to raise everything up. Ra raise it up. Um, all right, so here's the deal. We just went through, sandblasted, needle scaled, textured the Offenhauser intake. We then put one of the Canadian heads through the sandblaster as well. We sandblasted our little devil guy. I was able to just tape up the eyes so that we didn't lose those. And our little fuel block, our Fenton one. I'll just take these fittings off, but now we have that done too. Should be wearing gloves when I'm touching this stuff. Probably will affect it. Um, so what we're gonna do, this is kind of the process. Basically, get a nice clean container that fits. But what you wanna be able to do is you want to use boiling water. So I ran across the street, basically everyone in the industrial area, I went and asked for their kettle. I had like five going yesterday all at once. Different extension leads from different power points, so I wasn't gonna trip any of the wire, or any of the power. So once that's in there, this is gonna be kind of something you guys can try at home as far as how much of this you put in. You might find the magic recipe right off the bat, or you might have to add more or do less. So do a few test pieces till you come up with the right amount, but Basically what Jim had told me and what I've kind of seen online is you want the boiling water to be in here and then you want to add your powder um, until it starts to fizz and really start to look like it's kind of moving and doing, doing its thing in there. So once you start getting that fizz and there's lots of bubbles and stuff coming up, um, that's when then you want to try and put your piece in. Another big important thing to make sure when doing this, this is just a piece of uh, filler rod that I use when I'm TIG welding, TIG welding and they just sit in and then the part actually sits on top of that. So you don't want any contact to the sides and you don't want it touching the bottom. Reason being is this head actually yesterday, it didn't quite fit in the very bottom. It actually made contact to the side. And as you can see right here, it's actually where it's made um, contact, there's discoloration all the way around it. So it's obviously made contact in three points and then there's quite a weird coloration all the way around. So you wanna to try to avoid that. So you don't want it to be making any contact to anything. You just want it to kind of be floating in there or suspended by something that you can make. So another thing too is just, you know, you obviously kind of wanna have your parts relatively clean prior to going in here, even though this technically does clean it. What we're gonna do now is get all those kettles fired up. I'm gonna go get another container so we can kind of get all this stuff in two different batches. And then once we have them in, We'll set them in. We're gonna leave it for maybe an hour or two. I might just pull out a little part. We'll have a peek, see if it's doing its thing. And then we'll put it back down in here. And what I think we'll end up doing is leaving it overnight. Um, also another really cool tip that um, Jim from Glass Speed Equipment had mentioned is bronze bushings. Throw one of those in there and uh, you kind of get like a bit of a, a bronzy look or just a real subtle hue. And I couldn't really notice it too much on this. Like you can kind of sort of see it, but where I did notice it the most is where this head has had like quite a few extensive repairs. Um, and in these areas where it's been repaired, that's where they, it really stood out. So you can kind of see the bronze um, kind of color kind of coming through. So what I might do is I only stuck one in there. So I might try and suspend two of these on either side and maybe that'll kind of, you know, get a little exciting in there and create something cool. So, 
kettles, powder, parts in, and then we basically just let the magic happen. And then, um, yeah, we're just repeating the process. It's pretty ghetto, I have them all to different leads around because I've tripped the power a couple times. What I'm gonna do is start to add our laundry powder. It smells delicious. And we're just gonna put a few scoops in here and I'm gonna kinda show you how it sort of activates. Just trying to kind of evenly put it around just so it's not all in one area. And then hopefully that will allow it to evenly patina or age the aluminum. That's right. I don't know. We want it to start to sizzle, which I believe is kind of starting to do that. Yeah, there we go, maybe a little bit more. sizzling effect, which is what it's doing. So I'm just being clear on this too. We haven't figured out the magic recipe for how many scoops per liter. So I do, it's moving. You can kind of see it's, it's sizzling, it's coming up. So that's a really good thing. So what we need to try and do is get these in there and then we'll see if we can get the cover over top of it. Here we go. So, first one in. Let's get this bad boy in there. Hopefully it's gonna go in enough where it'll be under. It's okay. Probably need to clean the floors in here anyways. What I might do is stick a, so we're getting a little dangerous here with uh, extension leads. <laughs> so we got our bronze bush. I'm just gonna throw it down in one end and we'll just see what that does. Here is to get this guy on. Uh-oh, we got, we got water and extension leads. Let's unplug all these. Here you can see we got our little things and this is kind of what you want to try and do so we're this unsure on how this one's going to operate but you kind of want them to sit so that the object can kind of float in there and, and let that you know the water and the the powder kind of do its magic so so we got satan satan's going in times change she always says the good old days are gone dead but she tucks the kids into their bed like mama always did but it's hard when you ain't got nobody And it's hard when nowhere feels like home And it's hard when the world has gone crazy Seems just Put the lid on. We'll come back in a couple hours, see what it looks like. If it looks like it's doing the job, we'll leave it overnight. And tomorrow, we'll be able to pull it all out, wash it off, and uh, texture it a little bit and see if we've gone and you know happy with the result all right so it has been two two hours 20 minutes so we're just going to have a little squiz and see what these look like it's still hot yeah it is still hot these might be too hot to get out oh look at that it's already black. That's crazy. Um, what should I pull out? What would be easier? Probably the valve cover. Um, oil breather. It looks. Oh, it's not that hot. Oh, yeah, it's a bit hot. <gasps> Holy shit. Wow, that. Um, oh. Wow, I want to kind of pull it right out. I don't really want to touch it though. 
That um, bronze bush that's in there has certainly given it a bit of a bronze touch, eh? Holy cow. That is so wild. Um, I'd say that's done. But now we know what it looks like after two hours. Let's just leave these till tomorrow and then pull them out in the morning and have a look. Okay, so it's the next morning. It's freezing out. We got the coffee brewing. Oh, coffee's finished actually. Um, what we're gonna do is just basically pull the lid off these and um, have a little bit of a look at, you know, the, the time difference. So yesterday when we looked at it, that was an hour and 10 minutes, I think. And um, yeah, we're well and truly into overnight. So, oh, how's the water still kind of warm? Oh, wow. So definitely the bronze has kind of really played a role in this, which is really cool. I don't know if you can quite see it on camera, but there's quite a, like a sort of bronzy hue to it. So that's the textured intake and then through the sandblaster and then into the secret solution that's not so secret. Let's see what Ben's valve cover looks like. Yeah, that is very, very cool. So. Yep, that is very, very cool. It's nice and consistent, which is awesome. Just try and get a bit of that out of the head. So that's, that's great. And then we got our little devil head. So just, that looks cool too. It's all like magnesium, it's, it's wild. So I don't know if this is sort of the oxidization that's happening or stuff, but it kind of seems like a bit of a magnet. And this one's got stuff attached to it as well and on the inside. So maybe it's kind of acting as a bit of a, like an anode that's like holding some of the, the debris that's in there possibly. For you guys that are clicked on with this stuff, let, let me know, what do you think? Um, okay, what I'm gonna do is just grab a wash mitt. We're just gonna give that stuff a wash in the freezing cold. that up just slightly just to let it dry a little faster which is nice because today is very cold so nothing is drying okay so we got the parts out of the um, out of the containers and we've just gave them a good wash and we're uh, just letting them dry as you saw, I kind of just used the torch just to warm up the material a little bit just so that they would dry a little faster. This valve cover and the intake were in the same, uh, in the same box, but this has definitely dominated the, the bronze bush or kind of that sort of bronzy hue color that has kind of stuck onto it versus the valve cover actually does have quite a bit. When you look at it in certain lights, it kind of almost changes. Is, it's really cool. There's 
you can kind of see it. There's a fair amount of like bronze and kind of the edges um, sort of like where it's highlighted. And then down in the darker areas, it's like a little bit darker, which is really, really cool. So even on that side, you can kind of see, just looks like almost real worn in, you know, considering that's kind of what we worked with and then obviously sandblasted it. And then this is what we were trying to achieve. I definitely feel like we've, you know, we've hit the, hit the mark like r perfectly. So the really cool thing is, is that we can kind of still transform this a bit. So, um, you know, I want to kind of play around with a few different ideas and realistically, if you kind of screw it up and, and you don't like it, or you want to put it back in for longer and add a bit more, like you, you completely could. So I think, um, one thing I was saying to Ben was we definitely put a fair amount of that, um, oxy action laundry powder in there. And, you know, after looking at it in two hours, I think the difference probably hasn't changed too much. Maybe it's just kind of etched it in there a little bit better, but I'm thinking you could probably go less powder, longer duration, or more powder and a quicker, quicker duration. So, you know, we probably could have pulled this stuff out yesterday after two hours. It's just crazy, the difference in stuff, you know, like these heads are, are really, really dark and quite, um, you know, they are definitely consistent, but then you kind of get into this valve cover that obviously has a really nice surface. And yeah, like I think this dominates over anything that we had done. And then the bronze on this is really neat too. Um, I'll get Ben to do a zoom in of it, but you can really see the, um, the texture coming through, which is, which is wild. So I think it's just a really neat way of aging something if you're not really into kind of, you know, shiny billet stuff or polished aluminum. Uh, so what I want to do is kind of just grab this head and I'm just going to sort of show you the process. We're just going to, you know, experiment, play around with a little bit of um, the steel wool and maybe put some of the black Japan on there. And then we're going to, yeah, give it a wipe and maybe a beeswax and just see if we can get a little before and after and see whether or not we're achieving something or if we're you know, kind of taking away from it. Um, I do really like Ben's valve cover, sort of the way it is. I'd almost not want to touch it. I think if anything, I might just try and seal it and leave it. I just think it's got some incredible texture to it already and some really neat, you know, in certain lights, you can really see that little bit of bronze that's kind of gone in there. But I just think that that on the motor, with uh, the intake and everything done, and then you know our, our stainless, et cetera, shiny bits and chrome and that will just really contrast. I am happy to uh, play around with one of the heads that I'm gonna use on the flathead. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll just re it and try again, um, which uh, there's, there's no harm in doing that. Uh, I am just using that red garnet, so we're not you know, using a shot paint and really shooting it into it. So let's, um, let's just give it a try and see what happens. So I'm gonna grab some steel wool. This is kind of medium coarse. You could probably even go a bit finer. I did kind of notice that this might be a, maybe a little bit too much. All I'm doing here is just kind of giving it a little, a little bit of a uh, bit of love with, with the um, steel wool and you can kind of see, so it's already starting to kind of naturally bring that through. And you can definitely see the difference so there's where the bronze really, really picked up, where those uh, repairs were done. And then when you kind of come up, you can see where it's a lot of bronze there. And then you kind of get onto the side. Maybe it was the way that it was sitting flat. Obviously get the Made in Canada um, casting there to kind of pop. So we're just gonna run this over it. And this is where I kind of feel like the, the not so course maybe more of the fine um, steel wool might be a little bit better but you can kind of start to see it sort of pop Let's see if we can maybe get the Ford pick up the Ford yeah thing with this Roadster too is is that you know that real kind of depth and lots of layers and and um, sort of that aged look so without going too overboard you know you don't want it to be too fake. I'm sure guys out there are screaming. This looks looks shit, but I really like it.
But some nights when it's getting late, the diner by the interstate serves them up a nice hot plate to fill them for a time. Cheryl's always working there, the big blue eyes and auburn hair. She treats him nice and seems to care about what's on his mind. But it's hard when you ain't got nobody. It's hard when nowhere feels like home. All right, so as you saw, we got the beeswax on the head, kind of gave it a nice texture, and uh, you know. To be honest, it just looks like a, an old cast head that, that someone's probably used like a wire wheel to, to clean it out and it just is sitting there. So a lot of different techniques you could probably learn. Again, the valve cover just gave it a seal as well and that just to me is, is perfect. It just looks like a piece of magnesium. It's, it's awesome. Um, intake turned out amazing. Obviously the fuel block really captured a lot of that bronze, which is quite neat. And uh, you know our little devil, our little devil uh, eBay special, um, considering what it was before. Still really like the paintwork that was on it, um, but I just think that is that's spot on. So we'll definitely be going on the roadster with a bit of a theme we got going on. But you know we got a few more bits that we want to try and get through. I'm gonna just play around with a bit more experimentation, and and once I get the the block back um, and uh, get it painted, you know this stuff. I think, again, like I explained in our previous video when we were building Ben's dashes, you're not really going to get the full effect until kind of everything's on there and you can see the, see the, uh, the vision of what we're kind of going, going for. So, um, yeah, obviously, hopefully you guys kind of learned something kind of cool with uh, using the, um, the Oxy Action laundry powder. Um, this stuff definitely worked a treat. It was really cool to kind of just sit online and try and figure out different ways and, and most definitely speaking to Jim at Goliath Speed Equipment. Um, you know, he, he was very helpful with giving me some tips, especially with that bronze bushing. That was definitely a gym trick. So it was cool that uh, he was open-minded about uh, sharing it with me and also, you know, letting us kind of try and do a bit of a trial and error on camera and show you guys as well. So big shout out to him. We'll put the, the link to his store in the description and uh, be sure to pop over to his Instagram as well. Um, he's got some really nice pieces available to purchase and uh, he's definitely a diehard, uh, you know, kind of traditional hot rod enthusiast and, and has very deep roots in it. If, um, if you jump on there and read through his blog, he's got an amazing story of, of uh, past generations in his family that have kind of been into it. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit notifications and Make sure you tune in. I know I said it last time, and I'm sorry I let you down with this video, and it's not the big one, but next week we have a very special video. I'm sure some of you may have seen a few hints um, that uh, has to do with a Speedway track. Uh, it's going to be an absolute ripper, so you'll have to make sure you get the whole family around the TV, some, some popcorn, and, and watch and be entertained because it's pretty, pretty damn cool. Right on. See you next week. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's do All right, catch you next week.